Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to see how to dual boot a bare metal Windows and Unraid but then at the same time be able to boot that same Windows install as a VM. So let's get started. Okay, hi there everyone. Right, so in this video we're going to be dual booting a bare metal Windows 10 installation and Unraid Server OS on one machine. And I'm sure I can almost hear some of you saying right now, Hey Space Invader, haven't you ever heard of a VM? We can run Windows VMs on Unraid, we don't need to dual boot. And yes, you'd be right. You know, I love VMs myself and I use them all the time. And actually I'm making this video right now on a VM on Unraid. But occasionally, I want to be able to boot into a bare metal native Windows VM on its own. Now, admittedly, this isn't very often, but I think it's really useful to be able to have that ability. So what if I told you there was a way you could boot an Unraid Windows 10 VM, both as a VM on Unraid and also natively on bare metal? Now, the Mac users among you out there who are watching this video, I'm sure you're familiar with using Windows on a Mac using Bootcamp to dual boot. And what Bootcamp does is just create another partition on the Mac's hard drive and let you install Windows natively onto that. And then when you started up the Mac you could choose whether to boot into OS X or to Windows. But if you had some virtualization software on your Mac such as VMware or Parallels Desktop then you could also select that Windows partition and boot it as a VM as well. So this was really convenient and the best of both worlds. So I think to do the same on Unraid would be really cool. Even if it's only to run some benchmarks on a bare metal Windows installation and then be able to boot up the same system but as a VM to make some really good comparisons on benchmarks and the differences in performance between bare metal and VMs. Now to be able to do this we're going to have to install Windows natively on its own hard drive and then when we're using Unraid we'll pass that hard drive through and the VM will boot directly from that. But as I'm sure most of you guys already know Windows can be a real pain with its activation. You boot it on another system and it wants to reactivate again and it can cause all sorts of problems. So what we need to do is to make the hardware changes as small as possible. So because we're using the same hard drive obviously that's going to be the same and also we're going to pass through the GPU so the graphics card will be exactly the same as well. But the major thing that's going to be different will be the motherboard. On the bare metal windows it's going to be whatever the motherboard is in our server but the VM uses an emulated motherboard so that's going to be slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out what the UUID of the motherboard is when we're running bare metal windows and then we're going to spoof that and inject it into the VM. So that way when we boot the windows system as a VM or bare metal then the operating system is going to think it's running on the same hardware and because of that it's not going to ask us to reactivate Windows each time we boot from one machine to the other. So that will get us around the Windows side of the problems that we can have but there are also problems that we could encounter on Unraid as well. There's one thing we really don't want to happen, we don't want to be deleting any data on our array. So when we boot up a bare metal Windows and it's got all of the Unraid array disks attached well we've got to be really careful that Windows isn't going to touch them. And so how we'll do that is just disable various SATA controllers or individual disks in Windows and so the operating system can't see them at all and that way they won't be touched. And in this video I'm going to be installing Windows onto a separate NVMe drive although you could install it onto any separate drive whether it's a spinning mechanical drive, a normal SSD or an NVMe drive. And of course it goes without saying there can't be anything else on this drive now don't go trying to install it onto one of your array disks else your server isn't going to work afterwards. Now what I'd recommend people do if they want to try this is to disconnect all of the array drives and the cache drive, just pull out the SATA cables so when you install Windows you're not going to accidentally install it onto the wrong drive. But if you're really confident you're not going to install it on the wrong drive and you're a bit crazy, lazy and like to live on the edge a bit like me then you can just install it with all the array drives attached. If you go and delete a drive by mistake then please don't blame me, it wasn't my fault. You should have just taken that extra step of pulling out the SATA cables whilst doing the install. 
Okay, so with the new drive attached on which you want to install Windows onto, just reboot the server and boot into the Windows installation media and install Windows in the normal way. And now I'm at the selection of what drive I want to install Windows onto. I know that all of my array drives are either 3 or 4 terabytes, my cache drive is 500 gigs, and the drive I want to install on is a 250, which is this one here. And there's unallocated space on it, so I'm going to install straight onto that drive and let the install go through. Then towards the end of the installation we just choose our username and go through all the various questions and do that. And then after that we're ready, booted into bare metal windows running on our server. So if during the install you disconnected all of your array and cache drives, now's the time to shut the server down, reconnect them all and then boot back into windows. Okay so the first thing we want to do is go to this PC and then go to properties. And here we can see the various properties, I'm running windows 10 pro, it's on an AMD Ryzen 1700, 16 gigs of RAM and we can see here that windows has activated itself. So now let's head over and look at the hardware and click on device manager. And we can see here all the devices that don't have any device drivers installed. So in a minute just a quick install of all the motherboard drivers, that will sort that out for me fine. Okay that's good, so Windows has put in all my sound drivers already. So I wonder if it's actually put in the display driver. No it's just got the Microsoft basic display adapter so we're going to need to install that in a moment. But first I've got to look at what this is here, batteries, because I'm not on a laptop. So okay that's my UPS, so that's the UPS that's connected to the server so that explains that. Okay so let's go back now and actually update the display driver so we can get some decent resolution. As the card in this server is just an old Radeon 6550 I can just use the Windows automatic driver search and install. But after we actually boot this up as a VM, I think I will actually install the AMD Catalyst drivers for this anyway. But at least now I've got some half decent resolution, I can actually see everything on the screen. But I'm not going to install any more device drivers as yet. What I'm going to do now is actually disable all of the devices that I don't want running in the bare metal windows. Now all of these Intel NICs here, it's an extra card that I've got installed on the server that I pass through to PF, Sense, VMs and things like that. So we don't need them in Windows, so I'm going to disable all of them. So now I'm just going to head across to the network settings and have a look at the NICs there. We can see the disabled NICs that we just disabled a moment ago all greyed out. I'm going to rename the actual active ones. This one here is the main Unraid one that I normally connect to the Unraid server. This is the secondary motherboard NIC, so I'll just call that motherboard NIC. And this last one here is the 10GB connection. Right, so let's close all these windows. And then I think we'll head across to the Windows Disk Manager so we can see all the array disks and everything that's there. So we can see all the disks connected to Windows, all of the array drives, cache drive, etc. That's all here, but what I'm looking for is the actual Windows OS drive, which is this one here, the Toshiba NVMe drive, 256 gigs. Now what I want to do to this disk is I'm going to actually shrink the C partition to about half the size. Now you don't actually have to do this, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to create another partition on this drive. So then when I'm in Unraid, I can format it in XFS and use it to store some VDisks on the NVMe as well. So for my purposes, 120 gigs for Windows is fine. Okay, so now we want to disable all of the other drives that are not being used by Windows. So we want to go back to the device manager, and there are two different ways that we can actually disable the disks. Because my Windows install is on an NVMe drive, that has its own separate controller as you can see here. And because my Windows drive is on a separate controller, I could now just go across and disable all of the SATA controllers on this machine, and then none of the array disks would show up. But first, let's look at disabling individual disks on their own, because a lot of us will be using a disk that's on a SATA controller that may have array disks on as well. So in that case, you just select all of the drives that are array drives, and just click on disable on each of them, and then Windows won't use them. So this will protect the drives and keep them safe. Now let's just bring up Windows Disk Manager side by side with the Device Manager and have a look there. And I've forgotten to disable the cache drive so I'll just disable that now. So now with that done Windows Disk Manager can only see the C drive and also here it can actually see the USB flash drive for Unraid. So if I wanted to I could disable this drive as well so the USB flash drive isn't accessible at all. But actually I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now because my Windows drive is an NVMe drive on its own separate controller, 
I'm not going to disable my disks this way, so I'm just going to quickly re-enable them all. So now I'm going to click here the IDE ATA controllers and disable these SATA controllers here. So as my array disks are all attached to these controllers, then they're not going to be available in Windows. So again, all Windows Disk Manager can see is the C drive and the USB flash drive of Unraid, and the disks available in Device Manager are the same, just the USB flash drive and the NVMe drive. So now with the Unraid array drives disabled in Windows, we can now install the rest of the drivers for the bare metal Windows install. So I'm going to go across to the Gigabyte website and download the drivers for my motherboard. So now they're downloaded, I'll just quickly install them and then reboot the computer. And so with the computer rebooted, let's just go back to the device manager. And looking here, we can see that there are no devices that need installing. And we can also see the devices that are disabled, the SATA controllers and the four NICs that I disabled earlier. So that's the bare metal side of the Windows install all set up. But there's one last thing we need to do. We need to get the UUID of the bare metal Windows machine. And for that we need to bring up a command prompt and type the following WMIC space CS product space get space then in capitals UUID. Then just hit enter and then it will display the UUID for this machine. So we're going to copy this because we're going to need this later when we set up the VM. So I'm just going to make a new text file, pop it on the desktop then I'm going to copy it across onto the Unraid flash drive, so when I boot up into Unraid I can easily copy and paste it into the VM template. OK, so that's everything done this side, so now let's shut down the machine, and then restart the computer, but this time starting it up into Unraid, and then once in Unraid we can create a VM template, and then pass through this bare metal Windows 10 instance through as a VM. OK, so now I'm over on my laptop, and I'm going to open the Unraid server, and I'm going to click onto Tools, and then go to System Devices and just have a look at the hardware. And here in IOMMU Group 14, I've got my NVMe controller. So this is what I need to pass through to the VM. And to pass through a PCIe device in Unraid, we need to take the ID of the device, which is this number here, and then stub the device in the SysLinux configuration file, which you'll find here. Now, I'm not really going to go through much how to do this. I'm just showing you that I've already done it here. But if you want to see how to do this, then I've done another video on that, which you can see here. So now let's add another Windows template, add the NVMe drive and all the other hardware that we need. So let's click on to add VM, then obviously choose the Windows 10 template. And I'm going to call this VM Windows 10 Dual Boot. And I'm going to give the VM all of the logical CPUs but one. And I think I'll give it 8 gigs of RAM. Right, OK, BIOS type, what we choose here depends on how we installed Windows 10 earlier. I installed mine using UEFI, so that means I need to use an OVMF BIOS. However, if you installed Windows 10 as a legacy install, then you'd need to set this as C BIOS. So the BIOS type just has to match the way that you installed Windows earlier. And if you're not sure how you installed it earlier, just try OVMF first, and then if it doesn't boot with that, then swap over to C BIOS. But one thing to note here, if you're wanting to pass through an NVMe drive and boot from that, then you are going to have to use the OVMF BIOS. So you must have installed Windows using UEFI. OK, next. So obviously we don't need to have an install ISO, but what we are going to need, we are going to need the Vertio drivers because we're going to have to load in those when we first boot this up as a VM. OK, so now hard drives. Now because I'm passing through an NVMe drive, then I'm going to set this here to none. Now, if we're not passing through an NVMe drive, so we're not passing through a separate controller, and we want to pass through just a normal SATA disk, then we're going to need to change the primary VDisk location from non to manual. And we're going to pass through a hard drive by using its disk ID. So we'll start by putting in forward slash dev forward slash disk forward slash by hyphen ID, and then we need to find the ID number of the disk. Now the only unassigned device I've got at the moment is a USB disk that I've got plugged in here. But obviously you wouldn't be passing through a USB disk if that's your primary disk for booting Windows. I'm just using this one as a demonstration to show you how to pass through a disk by ID. But to find the ID number of the disk, we just want to click onto Terminal. Then we want to go to the directory forward slash dev forward slash disk forward slash by hyphen ID forward slash. Then we'd list the contents of this folder. And here are all the ID numbers of the disk that we have. 
And here is the unassigned Toshiba USB drive that I showed earlier. And to pass through the whole disk and not just a partition, we choose the first listing of it without the part 1 or part 2, as these just refer to partitions on the disk. So I'd want to copy this here, everything before the at sign, then just paste this in here. Now we're going to need to change the VDIS bus from VertIO to SATA in order for Windows to boot, as at the moment the VertIO drivers are not installed. So if you've installed Windows onto a regular hard drive, that's how to pass through an individual drive. However, as mine is an NVMe drive, I don't have a primary VDIS location, so that sets are none. So let's carry on from there. Okay, so next we need to pass through the graphics card, and mine here is a Radeon 6450. And also we need to pass through the sound counterpart of the graphics card. And then if we scroll down to other PCI devices, here this is my NVMe controller. So I'm going to need to pass through that for my hard drive to be passed through. But I've also got a couple of other things I want to pass through here. I've also got like a capture card, this Philips Semiconductors. I want to pass that through. And also I've got a USB controller I'm going to pass through as well. So once you've picked all the hardware that you want to pass through to the VM, then uncheck Start VM After Creation, and then click on to Create. So now we need to add in the UUID number that we copied earlier. So select the VM and then hit Edit. And then in the top right hand corner, we want to go from Form View onto XML View. And if we look at the top of the XML, the third line down from the top, this is where the VM stores its UUID number. So we just need to swap this out for the UUID that we copied from the bare metal windows earlier. So now I'm just going to browse through the network to my Unraid flash drive and then copy out the UUID that I popped in that file earlier. And then paste that UUID into the template of the VM. And then click update and now we're ready to start up the VM. OK, so now we've booted into Windows, we need to install the VertIO drivers. And if you notice here, it actually says that Windows is not activated at the moment. But Windows will activate itself shortly, and we won't have to ever do that again. Anyway, let's click onto Device Manager, and now install all the missing drivers. Now, I'm going to have to reinstall my VGA drivers as well. Now, normally, you wouldn't have to reinstall the graphics drivers for a second time. But the reason I'm having to do it is because I've actually passed through a different VBIOS for my graphics card, because I have a few problems with this graphics card making it work on Unraid. But for most people, you wouldn't have to do this. OK, so as installing drivers is really boring, I'm going to speed up this next part of the video and go through it at super speed. OK, so I've installed all of the VertIO drivers and now I'm just finishing off the graphics drivers. So now all I need to do now is just reboot Windows and then Windows will be activated and we'll have all the drivers and everything will be working fine. Right, so now we're booted back into Windows, so let's take a look at things. And we can see here that Windows is now activated, so that's great. So now let's look at our device manager. And we can see all of the drivers are installed, there's no missing drivers. So now we can use this Windows install as either a bare metal Windows or as a VM through Unraid. And when we're using it as a bare metal system, we don't have to worry about it being able to damage Unraid because it can't access any of the disks. So anyway, that brings us to the end of this video, and I really hope you found it useful and you liked it enough to be able to hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And just while I'm here, I want to say a really big thank you to all of my Patreons and all of my supporters. It's with the support of you guys that I'm actually able to make these videos. Anyway, so it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.